So the first thing I noticed was how smooth it was to scroll left and right. Opening applications was very responsive. Uh, let me fix the focus here real quick. Sorry about that. Um, opening applications was very responsive, worked very well. Um, closing them was kind of finicky. Um, sometimes it would work, sometimes it wouldn't. Like right here, you can see I struggled with it um, using both hands. Applications open fine and they are smooth to scroll, uh, but closing them is awkward. Typing was the big problem. There was a noticeable latency and the haptic feedback also had a pretty good delay. Um, typing also had plenty of errors. Most times you can type on something and get some thumb or, thumb or finger roll off and you can get some auto correction. It was absolutely terrible. It felt very slow very unresponsive. Scrolling was okay. I think that that's because the the low hertz on the display, but uh, moving back and forth through things, again, really smooth as far as navigating the operating system within the applications, pretty laggy, um, jumped around quite a bit. Closing the apps was, was tough. Um, I, I really just wanted to cycle through and try some different applications and see how it launched. This unit I don't believe was active so it couldn't connect to anything. The data wasn't working but um, moving it to its side very responsive and fast but again typing was very painful. Um, there was a noticeable latency when I punched in keys. Spelling wouldn't correct like most Android phones will. Um, it was really a poor experience. Um, it seems like a great attempt at a first phone but you can really start to see the the old hardware as far as last year's processor. I was really struggling to do this with one hand, so I'm sorry, I was holding uh, my phone with my right hand and trying to type with my, my left, but um, the keyboard experience was interesting. I was really wondering how hard or easy it would be to type on a device like this when you have to open the screen all the time. So uh, again, trying to get the keyboard to interact with Typing in just was super slow, um, lots of spelling errors, but as far as flipping back and forth, very quick. Operating two applications at a time was worked really well. They've definitely nailed it as far as the user experience between cycling apps, and that's what is the big selling point, having two screens running two apps at one time. Um, the dial pad worked really well when I could type in. It was fast, it was accurate. I didn't have any issues calling or, or typing anything in when I wanted to make a phone call. It was just texting. And then unfortunately, that's what most people are gonna do on their phone. They're gonna send text message. They're gonna send uh, information. They're gonna type emails. They're gonna be typing words in. They're not necessarily gonna be calling as much um, as times have changed. We're, we're texting more, we're emailing, we're inputting data into web browsers. Uh, the clock was very responsive as far as the setting alarms, the time of day, the stopwatch. Um, the world clock worked really well. I launched that along with uh, search engine. Bing came up, worked really well. Um, the internet was fairly quick when it would let me use it. Um, this was just a Bing search when I was simultaneously running the clock. And then I tried to close some apps just to see how that would interact as far as usability throughout the day, not closing applications, jumping in between things. Um, the slide to type worked well again, but jumping back into the typing, very disappointing, poor performance. Um, the haptic feedback had a delay, the typing had a delay, um, the predictive text did not work correctly at all. Just about any time I typed stuff in, I felt like it was going to get it wrong. Even when I was very specific and deliberate when I wanted to type right in the center of the key, very disappointing as far as how that was going. Now sometimes the, that experience is different when you're typing in a person's name on who that's gonna go to when you're gonna send a text message versus what the actual message is, but there really shouldn't be any difference when you're gonna type in input. Um, I was just typing in the same phrase over and over and then deleting it, moving it back and forth. I really wanted to put it through its paces as far as opening it, closing it, moving it around. Um, feeling it one-handed, it is incredibly light, it's incredibly thin. Um, they must have packed a really tight battery into this thing. Um, opening and closing it with one hand, I was actually doing that intentionally to see what it would be like for a user to come in and take it out of their pocket, open it up with one hand, see how they could use it with one hand and operate it. Because I text with one hand all the time. Just try to do things with 
using your other hand to do anything in the world from opening a door or going somewhere, operating a computer. Dialing was super smooth, very fluid, very responsive. I was very pleased with the dialer. There's a lot of background noise in Best Buy, so apologize for that. I was also worried about what the experience was gonna be like by accidental touches on the back of the screen, because it is a dual screen phone, but when you have it open like that, um, it does deactivate the back screen and there is an input method so you can double click it and turn it on. So you don't have to worry about accidentally opening an app or doing anything weird on the back screen. Now, I don't know how far you have to have it open before it will deactivate that other screen. It seemed like anywhere past a kind of a three quarters of the way touch. Now it may sense that when it's closed all the way and it's facing you only to use that screen, it seemed to automatically know which screen was facing me. So the, the gyro in there, is definitely telling its face up again just typing some things in um, and I kept going back to the same thing on this because it was such a disappointing experience uh, typing anything in was was slow it was laggy it was cumbersome and it was incorrect over and over and over so opening up YouTube worked really well very smooth pulling down the notification bar um, not a lot of options like you see on a lot of the other phones typically you can slide left and right and see a lot of that stuff um, very, very minimal with this. So this is very indicative of a, uh, a launch device with having a first generation tech of this type. So great new technology, phenomenal design and A plus on their ergonomics of how they built the phone. Um, but, but having the older Snapdragon processor in there um, and having those thin batteries, I definitely see this having an issue as far as latency and, and lag and slowing down over time. And if it's this bad, from a demo unit right out of the box, I can't imagine filling this thing up with applications, having played games or running it throughout the day, both when you're running your email. Um, this is targeted towards a business user or multimedia user, somebody who's going to be doing a lot of work on Outlook, watching YouTube, things like that. Um, it, it It's kind of finicky too, launching YouTube. It just jumps around. You can move it left and right, but I really wanted a half screen experience. I wanted it to maximize or really blow up onto the whole screen. I couldn't figure out how to get it onto the whole screen. Launching Spotify and Google Play Music, um, sometimes software won't let you do that. It actually let me run two music applications at the same time. So there didn't seem to be any software limitations on what you could run. I know certain phones with dual screen capabilities won't let you run certain apps when other apps are there via a software competitor. But a very compelling device, very interesting, super comfortable to hold. I actually love the design.